Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we're testing one of the new Hawk Vantage scopes, but first I make targeting squirrels in autumn woodland. I'm targeting squirrels in the woods today. Now the acorns are ripening and that's a mixed blessing. Firstly, that abundance of natural food means that the peanut feeders I usually use don't have the same appeal as usual. However, it does mean that the squirrels are really moving now. It causes a real flurry of activity. So, they're gonna be harder to pinpoint today, which means I'll be adopting a roving approach, moving around the woods, looking out for signs of squirrels and stopping off at any promising looking areas. It's a lovely day to be out in the woods and the squirrels are busy foraging on nature's bounty. But spotting them isn't going to be easy with so many leaves on the trees. I'm in no great hurry as I make my way around the chute. It's best to keep your progress slow and steady if you want to spot the subtle signs that give away the position of feasting squirrels. Okay, I'm moving along the outer edge of the woods now. Because the trees here receive more sunlight, they tend to produce heavier crops of nuts and berries, which can make it a really productive area to target squirrels. Now when I'm hunting like this, I tend to stop very frequently. I'll pause every 10 or 15 paces, just keep still and quiet, and scan the treetops. I'll be looking out for signs like bouncing branches or the flick of a tail, anything that betrays the presence of a squirrel. It's also worth scanning back behind you as well because what often happens is that when a squirrel's spooked by your approach, it'll freeze. But when it thinks that danger's passed, they'll often start moving again and that's when you tend to spot them. It's also well worth keeping a close eye on the ground because squirrels will often be foraging for fallen acorns, hazelnuts and beech mast that have dropped down amongst the leaf litter. and my point about keeping an eye on the ground is soon emphasised. As I make my way back into the woods and along the side of a pheasant release pen, I happen across a squirrel that's foraging on the woodland floor and get my first chance of the day. Well that certainly makes the point about keeping your eyes on the ground, but I'm not sure whether that one was attracted by the acorns or the pheasant feed. Shot was only about 20 metres, trickiest thing that I had to keep an eye on was threading the pellet past that pipe. Still, must take this one with a good clean headshot and it's got us started. With one in the bag I continue on through the woods remembering to make those frequent stops to scan the treetops and woodland floor for signs of squirrels. I catch a brief glimpse of a bushy tail, but this one isn't hanging around to offer me a shot. The clues on the ground help to explain what's happening here. I did actually spook a squirrel as I came round the corner then. 
and looking at the ground here there are quite a few discarded acorn husks so it appears that they have been pretty busy feeding in this vicinity. There's a stand of oak trees, plenty of acorns around and actually looking up above there's also a dray up there so I reckon this is an area it's worth me settling down, spending a bit of time, hopefully one or two will come back out. This spot offers a decent view of the trees I intend to cover. I want to dig in quickly and without making too much disturbance, so I'm not going to set up my hide net here, though I am going to put down my beanbag seat to keep me comfy while I wait. With a thick tree trunk as a backdrop and leafy green vegetation all around me, I've got a reasonable amount of natural cover where I am. Nonetheless, I'm still going to cover up with my camo headnet, but keeping hidden from squirrels isn't the main reason for wearing it today. Right, I decided to keep the headnet off while I was stalking, mostly because it gives me a clearer field of view. I can see where I'm going, look out for squirrels, and also watch where I'm putting my feet. Put it on now, not so much for concealment, because when those squirrels are distracted by all the natural food around here, they tend to lose a lot of their natural caution. The reason I've put it on is because there are biting flies here, a lot of midges around, so it's just going to make the weight a bit more comfortable for me. The concealment is still welcome, and it means I've got a better chance if something sharp-eyed like a jay or magpie happens to swoop in while I'm waiting here. As is so often the case, my next move depends on my quarry. All I can do is sit it out and hope that the appeal of the acorns is enough to draw the squirrels back out for another munch before I get impatient or uncomfortable. The session wears on and we eventually pick up on an encouraging sign of feeding squirrels. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's definitely at least one squirrel around because I can hear acorn husks pattering down through the trees. Trouble is, there's still a lot of leaf up there and I can't see where it's coming from. An acorn raiding squirrel eventually moves out onto an open branch and I line up for the shot. That goes to show just how confident squirrels can be at this time of year when there's a lot of grub about. That one was actually nibbling away at an acorn as I shot it. Now I'm not going to run in to pick it up because I reckon there's a chance of more action from this area. My hunch proves right, but this one's gone before I get the gun in my shoulder. But it's not long before the greedy tree rat is back in full view, and not far from where I bagged the last one. They seem to be using that branch as a bit of a highway. They've been whizzing back and forth across. That one made the mistake of pausing that time. Seems quite a busy area, so I'm going to sit it out for a bit longer, see if it produces anything else. So I stay where I am and continue with the stake out, scanning the treetops for any sign of feeding squirrels. On such a pleasant day it's no great hardship waiting it out for my quarry, but it's gone very quiet now. It looks like I've had my lot from this ambush, so I'm going to have to be content with two from here. Right, we've given it another half an hour, not had any more chances. To be honest, I'm satisfied with two from this spot. I'm starting to get fidgety now, so I'm going to go and pick up. One of the best things about adopting such a basic approach is that it takes me hardly any time at all to pack up and be on my way.
Well, that's three less greys on the estate. And apart from having an enjoyable time out in the autumn woods, we've made an important contribution to the ongoing pest control here. Now that's not really got anything to do with them eating the acorns. It's all about when the winter months come, there's much less natural food about, and these squirrels will be turning their attention to the pheasant feed that the keeper puts out in the hoppers. That can make a costly dent in his feed bills, so any that we account for are greatly appreciated. The crackdown will continue, and we'll be back again when the weather turns harsh. An enjoyable session in the woods there, and now it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News, brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. Brocock has confirmed that its eagerly awaited new Compato will be in gun shops by early November. The semi bulper PCP is expected to have a price tag of £589. It features a slick new multi-shot magazine system, two-stage adjustable trigger and adjustable power. Available in 17722 and 25, the Compato will deliver 100 full power shots per fill, Brocock claims. You'll notice it's got a power adjust on the side, it'll have a three-stage three adjustable, it clicks as well. 10 shot magazine, rotary, very similar to, uh, to uh, another one that we offer. Very smooth, about 80 90 shots per charge in 177. The new Waltham Maxis kit from Armex brings shooters a quality full power carbine brake barrel air gun and scope combo at a budget busting price. Based on the acclaimed terrace action, the Maxis comes with a Borg silencer, 3 to 9x40 scope and mounts. Cradled in an eye-catching black synthetic stock, it has a price tag of just below £270. What we've done, actually, we actually uh, build this in-house, is we've carbonised, recut and recrowned the barrel. We've added a moderator. We've got a 3 to 9 by 40 scope with a set of mounts. And it just has made the most practical all-weather carbine actually in our stable today. And finally, with the cancellation of the CLA Game Fair, organisations are throwing their hats into the ring to take on the fair, or stage a new event. A new consortium, composed of former Game Fair team members and contractors, has expressed an interest in taking over the fair. And Countryman Fairs, which runs the Midland Game Fair, said it's in consultation over a replacement event at the end of July next year. The CLA is currently considering a number of expressions of interest. That was the Airgun Show News. Hawk's new range of Vantage scopes has been causing quite a stir since its launch earlier this year. The range offers a huge choice, with options including 1 inch and 30 mm tubes, side focusing and no less than 10 different reticles. Prices start at just $42.99. So let's take a closer look at this one. This scope is the Vantage IR 4 to 12 times 50 AO. It's 349 millimeters long, weighs 600 grams, and has an illuminated mill dot reticle. My first impression is that it's a very tidy looking, well-built scope, and it's got a price tag of just £119.99. The zoom range of 4 to 12 times is just about perfect for hunting. Wind it up to 12 times and you've got that added precision for long range rabbiting off a bipod. Or turn it right down to 4 to improve light transmission when shooting in low light conditions at dawn and dusk or when lamping. That big 50mm objective lens lets in plenty of light and the lenses are multi-coated for optimum performance. The low profile windage and elevation turrets offer one quarter MOA adjustment. They're finger adjustable so you don't need any tools and they turn with clear, positive clicks. 
The scope is also parallax adjustable by means of the collar around the objective lens. It focuses right down to just 10 metres, which is just right for close range pest control. This scope has a mill dot reticle, which I particularly like. It offers plenty of different aiming points to compensate for the effect of wind and gravity on the pellet as it travels down range. Yet it isn't overcomplicated and doesn't clutter the sight picture. And if you do need to sharpen up the reticle to suit your eye, it's quickly done with the fast focus eye bell. The reticle can be illuminated for improved contrast in low light or when night shooting, which is likely to make it a popular choice with hunters. You can quickly light it up in either red or green and choose from five different brightness levels with the slick side switch. In practice, the Vantage is a great performer. This model has a one inch tube and produces a bright, crisp sight picture. Its simple lines make it easy to clean and the smooth housing around the ocular lens means that it's very easy to slide scope cam mounts and night vision add-ons on and off. All in all, I think this is a great scope, especially considering its modest price tag. It's shockproof so it'll stand up to use on recoiling air guns and it's also waterproof and fogproof. And it's packed with features without seeming gimmicky. On top of that, it also comes with the reassurance of Hawk's 10 year warranty. That's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.